How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern, and Saturdays, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 Eastern with Jim Valley. And Friday here on this program, and you know what that means? We got a lot of news to talk about here today. And also, because it's Friday, we have got Dave Meltzer and... Special guest Joey Janella will be joining us on the program together today. Not together. Unfortunately, not together. I'm sure Joey would try to get Dave into a match. But regardless, we will have Dave Meltzer on in the second segment of the show, Joey Janella in the final segment of the show. And we got a lot to talk about, both of them about, including the new edition of the Wrestling Observer newsletter, which is up on the front page at WrestlingObserver.com right now. So if you haven't checked it out, now is a good chance after this show to go do that. We'll talk about all the news, some of it coming out of the new Observer newsletter, including a little bit of a clarification on Bret Hart, and uh, we don't know what it means, because uh, quite frankly, AEW does not know what it means. But uh, we talked about the Bret Hart deal that he had signed with WWE, and it turns out it is a merchandising deal. Now... AEW believes that uh, regardless of the state of the deal, he is unavailable to AEW, but he may not be available to AEW. So I guess we'll have to find out what exactly this means, but we shall talk about that. We've got Dynamite ratings on on TBS from this past Wednesday night. We have got update on the Forbidden Door pay-per-view and stardom talent. I had speculated that we might see some stardom talent on the show. But now it's looking like that is unlikely. So we can talk about that. Cody Rhodes talking about uh, AEW, WWE, and and uh, sowing discord, tribalism between the two sides. And uh, we've also got an update on Alexa Bliss and much, much more. If you want Texas here today, not sure how much time we're going to have, but you can do it anyway. 425-780-7566 is the number. 425-780-7566. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Observer.com. We got uh, Dave Meltzer and Joey Janella will both be appearing on the show today. And uh, I think Mike Sempervivi eventually is going to be on the show as well. Oh, there he is. He's here with us today. And you know what else you can do today, everybody? You know what else you can do? Well, Cameo's doing a special here today. And the first 15 people who request a cameo from me today, it's only $25. And they're almost all and gone. Comes with a free mental evaluation. They're almost all gone. So if you want to grab one, no, no match reviews. It has to just be like a normal cameo. So uh, if you want to grab one of the last couple, head up to Cameo right now, F4W Online. Grab it while you can. Because I, uh, mm. I think there's two or three left right now. They went quick this morning. Uh, to a lot of people overseas, I might I might note. I'm popular on the other side of the ocean. Much less popular here. The only contract Bret Hart has with WWE at the moment is a merchandising deal. According to a report from our own Dave Meltzer, AEW was under the impression that Hart could not appear for them based on an agreement they believed he had with, a- with WWE. Hart has since said his only deal with WWE is for merchandise. Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Bret Hart said his only deal with WWE is a merchandising deal and not any other deal. While AEW previously believed that Hart was not legally able to appear for them, it's now not clear if that is actually the case or not. AEW is under the impression he could not appear for them due to his deal with WWE. We don't have it clear whether Hart could legally appear on an AEW broadcast or not. Past AEW believed he was not legally available to them. As of last week, Hart had had not been contacted by AEW about appearing at Double or Nothing or for the finals of the Owen Hart Foundation Tournament. Owen's widow, Dr. Martha Hart, will be on hand for the show. So they were doing teases on television. I would say uh, fairly strong teases for Bret Hart, and then those abruptly ended, and uh, this is clearly why. And uh, I I guess we'll find out what that means. So... Bret Hart may or may not be available to AEW with his new WWE lucrative merchandising deal. But he could still show up on the indie scene at any time with FTR, except if FTR is being managed by Mick Foley, as they are going to be doing soon, apparently. 
Wednesday's AW Dynamite, 921,000 viewers on TBS, down 1% from the previous week. Second lowest audience for the show in 2022. Fourth on cable, 0.33 rating, which is down 10.8% from last week. As always, I don't know if you guys are aware of this or not, the NBA playoffs There's dominated a cable early game. How many teams? Are there like 485 teams or something like that? Because these playoffs just go and go and go mm-hmm. and go and go. Early game, 2.7 million viewers and a .97 in 18 to 49. The late game, keep in mind, Raw is usually like in the .4. Uh, the late game here, uh, 4 million viewers and a 1.37. So uh, over triple what Raw does. And look, hockey is going to get much better ratings in the postseason, especially teams like New York are playing, you know, at home, things like that. But, but it's going to be funny to start giving some of these ratings and the NHL numbers that are going to be talked about because AEW had to be moved around because of it compared to these NBA numbers. I mean, they're not even in the same stratosphere and I can feel fans already just burning up about that. Hey, uh, whoever's doing the uh, video today, uh, can you turn the music off? The Twitch homies have music (laughs) blaring. All right. Is that better, everybody? Big audio nightmare. Okay, now can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Hopefully not. All right, looks like we're good. (laughs) No, no, we're not. Someone's no, getting not. someone's getting the axe laid down today. Wait, is producer Rob sneaking in here? I was going to say, I didn't know Rob. On? I didn't know Rob was back. <laughs> all right. You know what's so funny is all I do is get yelled at for looking at the chat during the show, and then I don't look at the chat like I'm requested, and the chat's been yelling at me here for five straight minutes, and all they hear is blaring music. You can't. You ever heard that old phrase? You can't win for losing. Which doesn't oh, make should. any sense whatsoever. I don't even know why that was a famous saying. But it's true. You can't win for losing. All right. There are no Does everybody plans. feel bad for you now, now that you've nailed no yourself ever, up no on that cross? No one ever feels, feels oh, bad for me. Never. Oh, my God. Never. There are no plans for Stardom Talent to appear on the Forbidden Door pay-per-view, but the company does hope to work with AEW in the future. It was noted by our own Dave Meltzer... In the Observer Newsletter, that while Stardom has its own pay-per-view on the same day as Forbidden Door, they would like to take part in future shows. There is uh, nothing going on at all regarding the show and Stardom, which has a pay-per-view scheduled the same day. We know Stardom, which is owned by Bushi Road, would be interested in being part of a future shows and working with AEW. Stardom would also be interested in booking AEW talent for the 12 uh, December 30th show at Sumo Hall, although neither side has talked as best as we can tell. So... Doesn't look like I. I knew there was a. Uh, I knew there was a pay per view, but I, I figured that, you know, one match you could send over, you know, two or three people or even one person, and they could uh, appear on Forbidden Door, get promotion for Stardom, but it's not looking like that's going to happen. So that's now, too and, bad. You know, people closer to that scene really were bearish on any possibility of that happening it was you know just kind of hope against hope because they have such a big roster and such a deep roster that they would bring somebody over if that was possible and it was kind of hope against hope but not looking like that's going to be the case but a door opening between AEW and stardom would be so huge for AEW and those young women look at some of the names that have gone through stardom that worked really well there whether it be B. Priestley, Tony Storm, uh, Nikki Cross, you know, had great matches with Io Shirai, who was there. Kari Sane, there's been just so many names that have gone through stardom, and it has benefited seemingly most of the women that have gone over there to to train and to try to get some shine onto their names. So that's only going to be a benefit for AEW. Well, I got a note here from uh, Jared, who's the uh, video producer today. He says, sorry, I've been using a new piece of equipment. So, uh, you know, we upgrade every now and then. What a brick. And when you upgrade, sometimes stuff like this happens, everybody. That's nice. We replaced the tin can at the other end of the string. That's fantastic. Get out of here, you idiot. (laughs) I'm trying to make things better here for everybody. (laughs) We we got a silk line. That's our version of fiber optics. (laughs) It's called new equipment to improve the quality of this program. We had one faux pas, bruh. 
Cody oh, Rhodes. Yeah, and you know what? If I had one, you'd never let me live it down. So you heckled me at the beginning of this thing for resetting this sorry ass box. Well, I, come on. I, the reason I, well, I didn't heckle you, but I, I did find it entertaining. <laughs> you pointed that, it out. Well, I find it, I found it entertaining that like you just automatically assumed you needed to reset the box. You didn't even ask me like what's going on here. I could have told you, you I'm resetting it on this end. Just chill oh, out for, for a second. God's sakes. I'm trying to help. Now, this everybody. is from the guy who didn't. What did we start? Twenty minutes late yesterday. Cody Rhodes says he is partly to blame for the divide between AEW and WWE fans. You're the Cody Rhodes of this show. He was on Corey Graves' podcast, and he says, I feel that fan base, that divide that exists among all of the different bubbles, I like to call them, if there was any negativity, well, I can put some of that blame on my shoulders. The last shows I had done before making this WWE return, I'm taking little fun pot shots and talking smack, which is what wrestlers do. I think sometimes the fans attach themselves to those statements and forget that we are in the realm of entertainment. But I added to the tribalism myself, so I can't necessarily get mad at it when I see it. Well, you know, I'm sure that he he probably did, and I'm sure he believes it and everything like that. But, brother, if you didn't exist, there's still going to be insane madness between these WWE and AEW fans. Oh, surely. And, but uh, I mean, I'm he... not going to sit here and blame myself because I post ratings. <laughs> You don't have to go on Twitter and go in my mentions. You don't have to, you know. You could go outside. You could make yourself a calzone. You could do all sorts of fun things instead of going on my timeline and typing dumb stuff. So I'm not taking the blame for it. I've had people blame me. It's not my fault. How did this turn around to you? (laughs) What are you talking about? You said I was the Cody Rhodes of the show. We did a you Cody are. Rhodes segment, and, and you so know what? now you're and mad about it? Just like Cody, you poke the continue to poke the bear because even though he says that, he adds to it, which we'll get to a little later on. Probably not. Back with Dave, Observer Live. Well, after. Um, and I think Dave is here via phone. Is that right, Dave? I'm here by phone, yes. Yeah. All right. Was that not connecting? I had tried to connect, and it said it was connected. Oh, that's weird. Well, you know, we've had one of those days. All right. Well, let's talk about the uh, new edition of the Wrestling Observer News that are right here. And uh, obviously one of the big stories that, uh, man, we talked about this Wednesday and what a reaction we got from people. This mm-hmm. uh, the story of uh, Warner and, you know, dropping some scripted programming. What does this mean for AEW? What does it not mean? And the answer is we don't know. But uh, conceivably, it could, it, this could, could be bad news. 12, it can go 12 different ways. Yes. Now, one thing that I, I do want to ask you about is, uh, and, and this is another thing that we don't know, but I believe when I watch when I watch AEW, uh, this to me would fall into the sports category, even though it's not an actual sport, more than it would a, a scripted uh, program, a, a drama or whatever. It feels it's, clo- it's, clo- it's closer to sport than it's closer to sport than scripted drama. Yes, and it's going to largely depend on what the people that are making these decisions how they want to to qualify. Because of course, as we're well aware, when WWE needs to be sport, they push themselves as sport, and when they need themselves to be entertainment, they push themselves as entertainment. I would say that at this point, AEW needs to push themselves as sport. Well, they have, they they have, they have, and it's wavered kind of back and forth, like. It's weird because on TNT it was considered sport, and on TBS it was considered entertainment, and I and that's the same exact show, Dynamite, and I could not give you an answer as to why. So is uh, is Dynamite considered uh, entertainment, and Rampage is considered sport at this moment, since uh, one of them is on TNT? Um, that varies. <laughs> There's no exact thing, um, so you know it's um, it varies. I mean, in theory, they're all sport, but um, they, there was a distinction changed between TNT and TBS. I don't know why. Dave, when it comes to HBO Max, it's going to be merged with Discovery Plus, and that obviously means a lot more hours that are packed on to Max and a lot more windows for people to look at when it pops up there. Uh, just obviously it's way too early in the game and AEW doesn't even have a, a fixed streaming service, but do you think something like that would be a benefit for AEW to latch on to, or is it better to maybe try to start something on their own so they just don't go in there and get lost in the mix? Um, I mean, it all depends on the economic deal. I mean, if they get 
a, an economic deal that they feel would make them more money or even the same money, I would go on HBO Max because the more the more roots you have with the company, um, the more they need to keep you. You know what I mean? I mean, it's like yeah. it's, it, you don't. You know, the one good thing that they have is they're doing their pay-per-views through through Bleach Report, which is part of the company, and it makes Bleach Report a lot of money every quarter. I mean, it's not a small amount of money at all. And so, you know, all of those things are very beneficial to AEW when somebody else is looking over and trying to decide, like, okay, what's worth happening? And it's like, this is more than a TV show to us. It's it's a streaming property that's popular. If it, if it becomes a streaming popular, a property that's popular, and it's a pay-per-view uh thing for us in a in a field of pay-per-view where you know there isn't a lot left so um you know that that's that all, all of that stuff would be beneficial but you know yeah of course everything's nobody really knows what's going to happen next except for i mean even the people i think in charge don't know because i don't think they've sat down and looked over everything you know to, in that detail to decide what they're going to do you know um there's been talk for a long time now, because every time there's a new WWE deal and, and you look at Raw's numbers as compared to two years, five years, there, there's always the people who go, oh, they'll, they'll never get a big increase. And they always get a big increase. Well, look at the NHL. Well, yes. And, but my, my point is this. So there has been a big change in the last couple of days, actually, as it, uh, as it pertains to the perception of, of streaming. Uh, Netflix has crashed, and CNN Plus has gotten axed. And when streaming first began, you know, there were a lot of people that started to sign up for different streaming services. And then, you know, the next thing you know, there's like 5,000 streaming services. And right. if you want to sign up for all of these different services, I mean, you are actually, depending on what you want, you may have just been better off with cable. Because you time to death. you're being asked for this and this and this and this and this. So it seems like we have momentarily... And I don't know where it's going to go in, you know, in yeah, the yeah, future, yeah, but yeah. we've hit a ceiling here. We're, so we're, we're correcting the course, so to speak. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Which which really makes me start to think about some of these these deals that have been signed, uh, not just for streaming, but for television. With the idea that you know we're signing you to this television deal, but it'll also be content for streaming. Now streaming has hit the ceiling, so we're actually in a in a very weird place right now. Where, you know, everybody was all excited about HBO Max and AEW and, and, you know, these various deals. And I don't know what this is all going to mean. I mean, my point is, I think that this idea that everything is going to go up and up and up, we hit a ceiling. And, you know, a year from now, I don't know. I mean, you know, maybe people are going to start migrating back to just cable because it's cheaper than having to buy all of these streaming services. We are in a really weird position, you know, because like I, I always like to say that I try to be five years ahead, you know. But now I don't even think you can be two years ahead because, you know, like before, yeah, you kind of knew fixed where everything's going. And now things change so rapidly. And, you know, yeah, you, I mean, you don't know where the media landscape's going to be in two years, let alone five years. And so everything is really everything speculative right now. Um, you know, you don't – I mean, is cable going to – slowly die off or is is it at the level that it is and now you know it's going to stabilize um is streaming gonna is this a momentary blip just for netflix so to speak but will you know just because there's some competition for netflix when they were only game in town or is it is it a sign that you know of streaming and and we don't know and we're not you know these things are going to take years to kind of shake up so um yeah um so AEW's there. I mean, they're in good shape in theory. They're a growing company, and that's good um, in a field like, you know, as far as the television goes, where most things are going down and they're going up. So that's a positive. Um, it's a big positive, actually. Um, but, you know, it's there's just so many unknowns that you just – nothing's for sure. That's for yeah, sure. I guess yeah. one theory is, I mean, with, with so many of these places hemorrhaging money because they bought so much original programming, it may be a better idea to try to partner up with somebody who is obviously AEW going to keep the rights for all of their things, and it could be more beneficial that way, and there would be more interest that way. I keep thinking that's going to happen at some point with the NFL, you know, melding more things in because they made Sunday ticket and things like that, and it's tough, you know, with everything changing. You know, I think that's where Amazon could kind of slip in and, and actually – I guess they're doing it with football this year, where it's maybe better to partner up with an AEW than it is to try to outright buy all this other content that they're losing so much money on. 
Well, I mean, the one thing with the one thing with AEW is you could probably make some pretty good deals for it now because it's still in its infancy, so to speak. And it, it appears it's got, you know, some longevity. I mean, everybody who thought it was like this flash in the pan, it was going to crash in six months. I mean, that was definitely proven wrong. And so now they're like what I would call a pretty solid, you know, thing that has a lot of deals that, that could be made. So, you know, in that sense, they're in a good position. But, you know, like everything's changing. Who knows? You know, it may, you know maybe they got in too late. Maybe, you know, you know, you know what I mean? Maybe it would have been better to make those deals a month ago. Maybe it's going to be better to make those deals a month from now. Who knows? Well, the other thing, too, is that uh, the – we don't know what the future will hold, but there are things we can learn from the past, and that is that, you know, Satnam Singh debuted, and there are international television markets. AEW is, I think everybody would agree, if you look at the ticket prices, I mean, they're probably underpricing their tickets to live events. I mean, there uh, are other ways to try to generate additional revenue if something happens and they can only get a similar TV deal as to what they're getting now. Well, they will increase in revenue in other ways between, you know, whether it's video game or, um, you know, you know, you know, there, there are different revenue streams that will increase revenue. But the TV deal is still the biggest story. You know, the biggest story in wrestling over the next two years is going to be the size of this TV deal because it's going to determine exactly how much competition there is, you know, at the top and, and the salaries of all the wrestlers and everything will all be determined in a roundabout way, buy this next television deal. So, um, um, but yeah, they if they're let's just say their revenue is eighty five million dollars this year, which is which is probably pretty close. Um, you know, even even with the, with the TV deal, if it stays the same, that revenue number will probably grow. You know, just because between um, yeah, you know, you can you know the the, the um, grosses seem to get a little bit higher, the pay per view seem to get a little bit higher. There's probably going to be more merchandising deals that get made, things like that, you know, with outside sources as the company gets more and more famous, so to speak. So, yeah, that, but the big jump, you know, and there'll be international TV deals, too, that will come in and that will help. But still, the big deal is the U.S. deal. And I think, obviously, over the next five years, the uh, three big stories are going to be AW's deal, WWE's next deal, and mm-hmm. when the Peacock deal comes due, because... That was a deal that that Peacock way overpaid for. Way overpaid, yeah. And uh, you know, with with the, the way that things went this week, and granted, we're four years away, but uh, that will well, be that an does. interesting potential renewal as well, or whatever happens. It gives yeah. Fo- yeah. Fox a chance to kind of. Tubi's been spending a lot of money. That could dull for right now, and I could see them being in the market for for WWE's content big time if they last. So yeah, all of this. Oh, the, one, the one thing, the, the one thing with WWE, the one thing with WWE is, is because of the big brand name, there is always going to be interest in WWE, and, and the key to AEW is to build its brand name up to where it's at least close or similar to, to WWE. Where... Yes. Well, we actually have David to break. I want to thank you so much, Dave. We'll plug the Observer when we come back. Back in a moment, everybody. Observer Live. Come. New Observer, you can read all about it, WrestlingObserver.com. Your subscription gets you all of these audio shows in podcast form. And a New Observer every week, 35, 40,000, 40,000 words. Bro, if you read The Old Man in the Sea, I'm not sure that's 40,000 words. Every week there's a New Observer with all of the uh, all of the latest news. When you wake up Friday, there's all these this wrestling news online. It's all from The Observer. May as well just read The Observer. So that's up there for subscribers. You can also grab a print copy, P.O. Box 1228, Campbell, California, 95009. Send him some cash. He'll send you some issues. P.O. Box 1228, Campbell, California, 95009. I don't know why I remember some things and not others. Like I can't remember Sophia Cromwell's name, even though I just did. But I remember that damn address for the Observer. Well, it's they'll, been they'll, a part of your life for how long? They'll dig me up to, 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 to reanimate me a thousand years from now. And the first thing I'll say is, P.O. Box 1228, Gamble, California, 95009. I don't think the phone number's changed either. No. In fact, it hasn't it changed. It actually has changed a little bit. It hasn't changed in probably 25 years, but <laughs> it has. Uh, he used to have another number. He used to have a 900 number. I was on it. Making that, making that cheddar. 
<laughs> that you had to give all back when your line uh, died hey, out. But. By the way, speaking of uh, uh, streaming services, Pluto uh, TV tomorrow night, Defy Wrestling. I like Pluto. I will be there. The show is going to stream free Ooh. on Pluto tomorrow. And uh, filthy Tom Lawler will be facing John Moxley in a fight I've been waiting for since November. Oh, Moxley's got his insurance paid up. Moxley? Mm -hmm. You think this guy? You think this guy don't train? Somebody check Renee's Twitter right now, because if she's not worried, she should be worried. She should be very worried. Wow. Hey, come on, man. As as tough as John Moxley is, Tom Lawler, your New Japan Strong Openweight Champion, has had a year unlike none other. And I have a feeling oh, Moxley that Moxley hasn't. Uh, it, he's yeah, yeah, he's had a decent year. He's had some some adventures this year, but still filthy. Tomorrow or tonight on Pluto. Hey, listen, I wish this guy the best, but you know why John Moxley's going to win? Why? I'm tell you why he's going to win. He's going to lift that bloke up and death rider him right on his head. That's why. But you want to know why he's going to do that? Why? Because Tom Lawler, my great friend Tom Lawler, don't get me wrong, great friend, but I I am honest with my friends. And what Tom should have been doing in the lead-up to this fight tomorrow with John Moxley is training, saying his prayers, taking his vitamins, Sleeping, eating healthy food, and getting yeah. ready for this fight. Okay, what, but what you know what he's you doing? He's not. He's watching the Stardom Cinderella tournament. He's binging it, and he's watching this stuff over and over again. He was up to like five o'clock in the morning. That is not how you get ready for a match with John Moxley. Wait a second. And Are then you... after what happened in the Cinderella tournament, he probably couldn't sleep. No spoilers. I... Are you saying that on his IG, when he is showing out with the pictures of the kettlebells and he's lifting those, are you saying that those are No, bro, are he, he, been... he has not been doing kettlebells all week. He's been watching this Cinderella tournament all last night. He should have been sleeping, but he was busy binging. That's what he was doing. So that's why I think this is going to take its toll on him. I tell you what, I think he's going to beat him so bad, you might actually have to scroll up after the show's over, and on the 24-7 Cops channel, you may see them arresting Tom Lawler for what he's going to do to John Moxley tonight. This person here says, uh, uh, please go to your way to watch the Izumi match, stardom match of the night. Hey, you know how I know to watch that one? Because Tom was texting me all hours of the night about that match when he should have been sleeping, training, and getting ready for a fight. You know, John Moxley in the Blackpool Combat Club. So? The issue is not even whether John... The issue is not about John Moxley and Filthy Tom. It's also about Regal. Dude, You want to let down on. William Regal? Moxley could barely beat Wheeler Yuta, for Christ's sakes. Yeah, I mean, Wheeler Yuta's been Moxley's... running a rough shot. What do you think he could do? Are you... And Tom Lawler hasn't? Come on, man. You might stretch the entire Blackpool Combat Club if they got enough guts to show up, and I don't think they do. Hey, look at this person. He says, Brian Danielson was the best main event heel in wrestling a couple of months ago. Now he's making hot tags to Wheeler Yuta. It's a fun story, but they have buried a top guy deep in the middle of the card. Well, first off, there's a lot of stuff going on here, buddy. Number one. I was going to make a joke, but this dude might be serious. Number one. I think he's serious. I don't think that... uh, that Brian Danielson was supposed to have that heel run. I'm pretty sure that that was supposed to be John Moxley turning heel for a run against Hangman Page, and then John Moxley went into rehab, and everything had to be changed, and Brian Danielson was put in that spot, and it was a temporary spot, and it was a spot that led through the match, and now he's he's back doing this. Bly, L- Brian Danielson, dude. If if this were if he were left to his own devices, I mean he'd probably be like in the dark order or something like that, putting people <laughs> over every week. I'm sure that this is like it's hard enough to get him to be out there mauling people and beating people up every week, but he wants to be in there elevating new guys, and that's exactly what they're doing. He called Wheeler Yuta by name when he talked about wanting to do this. And if you guys don't think and I'm not confirming this because I don't know. All I all I know is I was on the Jericho Cruise two years ago when they made the plans for the six-man tag team titles, okay? These belts are coming at some point. 
So and if you don't think that Danielson and, and Moxley and Wheeler Yuta are either going to be the first champions or they're going to be in contention for the championships, this is not a mid-card act here. This is a main event crew, this Blackpool Combat Club. So I do not see this as a burial of, of Brian Danielson at all. <laughs> Brian Danielson is the most unsinkable professional wrestler active on the planet right now. You could do anything you want to him. And Kevin Owens is getting really close to you could have Brian Danielson lay on his back for the next six weeks. And then people at uh, six weeks and one day go by, you put him in the main event, people will buy it because he's Brian Danielson and he's that great. This is not a burial of, of Daniel Bryan. If this, if, Sir, calm down. It's okay. He's going to be just fine, and you put him in any position, he's gold. And right now, in the position he's in, he's shining. It's a, uh, this person says, Tony Khan said he is waiting for Kenny Omega to come back to introduce the uh, trio. I wouldn't wait, brother. No. Like, I know no. that it's probably like Kenny Omega's baby, because I think he was the one that was talking about it on the boat and everything like that. But... I mean, bro, we've yeah. got... Do I need to rattle off lists of six-man teams in, in AEW? Because I talked about the Blackpool Combat Club. But, I mean, I mean, you can, you can go from here till forever. The whole organization was built on trios. This whole thing from the jump has been built on trios. I, they have been. It's been like that the entire time. It's only natural for them to have those belts. Now, I can see wanting to merge the women's titles. I could see wanting to maybe you know do some other things and you got to be careful on probably how you utilize six-man belts but it's like tag team wrestling if you just put focus behind it people will buy it will it be von eric's free birds no but you can get a lot of mileage out of those six-man belts because of how they set up the entire organization with having their group factions being really no more than three in most cases Spurs here says, I cannot wait for Swerve versus Darby on Rampage tonight. The Washington boys fighting proud on Rampage tonight. Defy would be so proud. Swerve actually referenced uh, Defy on his uh, Twitter the other day. He was talking about, uh, he threw out a date that haunts him. And it was, in fact, a date where the two of them wrestled in a no-holds-barred match for Defy. And uh, Darby beat him. <laughs> Yeah, he said in his promo that they'd bumped and bumped on the indie scene, and you know, if people went back and researched that, the first thing you pull up on Google is Defy. All righty, what else have we got here? That's actually all of the uh, the big news. There's a lot of stuff coming up this weekend. I'll be reviewing Stardom with uh, Filthy if he makes it through the weekend on uh, Monday. Yeah, he's got uh, John Moxley on uh, Saturday night, and then Sunday Black Label. He's got Davy Richards. So. This bloke's going to take a beating. Well, and he's going to show up Monday take a beating on his show. Are you kidding me? This is even better. After you see Tom getting arrested on cops for, for slaughtering John Moxley, then he gets out of jail and he goes and he beats Davey Richards. And because Davey's an EMT, that ambulance that pulls up, when Tom throws his ass in the back, he could work on himself on the way to the hospital. So watch that on Black Label Pro coming up. I'm just glad that uh, Davey Richards is an EMT so he can put Filthy back together after that match on Sunday. Yeah, right. He's going to be taking his own foot out of his rear end for what Tom stretches him and does to that man. Are you kidding me? Jeez. And by the way, here's something that you, you know can how, worry You know how far back me and Davey Richards go? Way farther back than Tom and I. See? And that's... Well, it's, and what does that mean? What does back, that mean, Brian? Back when he drove down with us to uh, Tito Carrion's school and we called him Wayne Kerr. What, wanker? Horrible. I was a horrible person. <laughs> You're a horrible person now. I've, I've learned my You lesson. are the Cody Rhodes of this show. And let me just throw this at you because I can have a feeling that this soundbite and this line, looking at it, reading this on the front page of the Wrestling Observer here, uh, he goes on in this interview to say... <laughs> It was unique to see people burning my old AEW shirts, which was a trend for a few days there on social. It felt kind of like you were leaving a sports team, like I left this city to go to this city. It didn't break my heart, but I do remember that I thought it was odd because the place doesn't exist without me. Now, time out there for a second because he goes on. That is going to be the thing that gets taken out of this and out of context and gets shot to everybody as see he's still taking pot shots he's still poking he still knows exactly what he's doing to fire people up and add to the tribalism that takes place now he also goes on to say 
there's other people that needed to be there for it to, to it for it to exist for sure. But I'm one of the people that the place exists because of AEW exists partially because of me, and that's not a lie. But there will also be people that say. Cody was the man on the tails of the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega and the New Japan success and all of those things. And they probably would not have needed Cody Rhodes if you put another name in place of his. Whether that's true or not, I won't say. And I won't even try to, to guess on. But I have a feeling that that's going to be a thing this weekend. I just realized SmackDown's tonight. It is. <laughs> What's on the show? Stuff. I wonder if that Hopefully guy that emailed me Roman. during the uh, show yesterday is going to be really mad that I don't remember everything that's on SmackDown tonight because it was handed to me on a silver platter. <clears throat> All right, let's see what the uh, WWE.com says. You ever notice when you type in <clears throat> things, like sometimes things don't come up? You can get all verklempt and stuff. All right, uh, WWE.com, SmackDown. Char- oh, it's that's right, it's a taped show. So I guess oh, yeah. I guess Font with a Roy. contract signing. That's right, contract yeah. signing. Yeah, we got a we got a contract signing with RK Bro and the Usos. We got Charlotte and Ronda in a beat the clock I quit challenge. Who can make their opponent say I quit fastest? Which uh, spoiler, <laughs> they do the exact opposite way that I would have done it. So anyway, Sami Zayn and Drew McIntyre in a cage match, and oh yeah, a ricochet. Puts the Intercontinental title on the line against Shankly. Coming up tonight on SmackDown. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Observer.com. Somebody that chat had a fabulous idea during the break. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Shankly should mm-hmm. be Wes Lee's brother. You're not, not, you're not going to do it to me with that one. You got to get better. Come on, that's a great idea. It's, uh... You know those stupid WWE movies that they made, WWE films? That'd be the best buddy film. Old Shankly and Wes Lee well, well, out I, there but... fighting crime or something. He'd be Shank then, I guess. And that would be his weapon yeah, of choice. Shank Lee. I got it. And got Wes it. Lee. So how do you do the, the script? Because, hey, listen, so... if you've watched NXT 2.0, this Wes Lee needs, he needs something. Because well, maybe... right now he's just wandering on a beach Cutting promos about something he's not allowed to talk about. You know, that's what it is. He needs to be wandering on the beach, and Shankly, who got the name Shank by being in jail, like, that that's his name, and then he trips over him on the beach, they get together, somebody thinks they robbed something or did something wrong, the cops are going after him, and that's how this buddy adventure begins with Wes and Shank Lee. I can't believe that uh, nobody, nobody seems to like my idea. All right. Uh, this person here says... Uh, uh, Sean Ross Sapp said NXT releases incoming. Oh um, I don't like to be that guy because it was wrong. But I did hear two weeks ago on Friday, NXT releases were coming. And then none did. So uh, I guess we'll see what happens. Maybe it got delayed two weeks. Hopefully it's not. Anyway, we're going to wrap it up. i got a lot to get into this weekend, everybody. Don't forget to check out Defy tomorrow if you're in the area. I'll be there. Stop by and say hi. Get back Throw on... eggs? No. But get a cameo at 4 Online. Are you doing live cameos with people? I should do a cameo from in hey, the charge ring. Charge him 50 bucks to stand next to you with the phone? Do it. I, sh- I should do a cameo while uh, Tom's getting his... Uh... Anyway, we're out of here. We'll talk to you next time. Wrestling Observer Live.